Is Noah Gragson about to pull a Daniel Hemrick and be one and done as a Cup Series driver? According to Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic, that's a real possibility and something that has been discussed within Legacy Motor Club and presumably within TRD as well. And you're probably wondering, who would take his spot? Well, John Hunter Nemechek is primed to take that spot. TRD is super high on him. They want to move him to the Cup Series. He's already scored four Xfinity Series wins this year. And Noah Gragson has struggled massively. He already left the TRD family one time to go over to JRM, and it seems like maybe that loyalty isn't there necessarily, and it could just straight up come down to performance because Noah's been abysmal this year. He has scored zero top 10 finishes. Even JJ Yaley has a top 10 finish in Rick Ware racing equipment. Outside of that, he is last amongst drivers that are full-time in the point standings, which is absolutely abysmal when you consider that Ty Dillon is also running full-time in the Cup Series as well. Chase Elliott has missed seven races. He's massively far ahead of Noah Gragson. Noah Gragson has just had an absolutely terrible year, terrible rookie season. Uh, he got concussed. He said he wishes it was the offseason. I'm sure he wishes it was the offseason uh, right now as well. The good news for Noah Gragson is the fact that JRM does have one, if not two, Xfinity Series rides open next year, and he could just go back down there, maybe, if they have sponsorship or if he can find sponsorship, and try to win that Xfinity Series championship that eluded him. But he at least knows how to win races down there. It has not translated to the Cup Series this season. Again, not entirely on him. His team is in a weird spot as they transition out of one manufacturer into another manufacturer. And you know Chevy's not exactly handing over any sort of state secrets to them to be like, here, let's help you guys run better before you head on over to uh, Toyota next year. That's absolutely not happening. So I think that's definitely hurt Noah. But at the same time, Eric Jones has been able to put together an okay season, especially better in the second half of the year so far. But when you're behind Ty Dillon in points, that is just really bad. No offense to Ty Dillon. I'm, I'm not trying to take shots at him. Maybe he can land an Xfinity ride uh, with his pop pop next year because it sounds like Carson Hosovar will be taking that 77 ride. He was just on DBC this week. He said he has nothing signed for... 2024 yet and when asked if he likes sequential shifting or h pattern shifting he didn't really give an answer but obviously he's been linked pretty strongly to that 77 spire car replacing ty dillon after his start in um, a fill-in role while Corey lajoy took the nine seat when chase elliott was out carson hosovar took over the seven ride at gateway had a really good run i think he had driven all the way up to 16th place before he had a uh, rotor break and went off into the wall ending his day, but he looked impressive at that point. The biggest thing for Carson Hosovar is the fact that he's only run a handful of Xfinity races. He has three truck series wins now. He's only 20 years old. And this is one of those situations where if you have an offer in front of you for a cup series ride, it's really hard to turn that down. Absolutely incredibly hard to turn that down. Ask Anthony Alfredo or a handful of other guys that probably took rides when they, when they shouldn't have. But at the same time, I don't know what his Xfinity offers are. He doesn't bring a ton of money from what we've seen. Um, so I don't know what his Xfinity options are. You would obviously ideally like to see him move over there first as well. Um, but we have heard a ton of people say that the truck translates more to the cup car than the Xfinity does to the cup car. So maybe that transition wouldn't be that difficult. He did say that he felt super comfortable in the cup car when he got in it for the first time. Obviously, he's going to say that because he probably wants a cup series ride next year. Ha having said that, though, we've seen some of these young guys come in and take these rides when they're only 20 or 21, 22, and it just doesn't pan out for them. So hopefully he isn't just the next guy in this long list of guys that have kind of gotten in, chewed up, and spit out uh, rather quickly. Noah Graxon is a, maybe a perfect example of this. Even though he went to Xfinity, he might not have been ready, or he jumped into a situation that wasn't perfect for him at that moment. I don't know if the Spire 77 car is necessarily the spot where you want to try to jump in and prove yourself. Although... Stranger things have happened, and maybe that does end up parlaying. He can parlay that into a better ride into the future. We'll have to wait and see on that one. In terms of other silly season news, the topic of Martin Trucks Jr. and Eric Almarola. Neither one of them have decided if they want to retire yet. Martin bought a boat, if that tells you anything. So now maybe he's just more inclined to retire and enjoy that boat. We'll see what happens there. Eric Almarola said he has not decided yet. Um, either what his future is, and it's kind of maybe holding things up a bit. TRD said they're going to give Martin as much time as they want. SHR is obviously going to give Eric Almarol as much time as he wants because he brings like $20 million a year in sponsorship with Smithfield. So they desperately need sponsorship over at SHR, and they're not about to be like, 
We need a definitive date. Uh, so if Martin does retire, John Hunter Nemechek, again, is TRD's pick to likely go into that number 19 car. We'll see if it stays the number 19 or gets renumbered to the number 18 when Martin does retire. But if John Hunter does get that ride, it likely saves Noah Gragson for another year until Sammy Smith is ready to move up to the Cup Series. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. They could obviously always take a flyer and sign a free agent as well. Um, not necessary. <clears throat> Not necessarily sure if that's what they want to do. And then on the Eric Amarola side, Stuart Haas Racing has really, apparently, according to Jordan Bianchi, cut their shortlist down to either Zane Smith or Michael McDowell. And that kind of leads us into Front Row Motorsports, who controls basically silly season for Ford, at least right now. They have three drivers under contract um, for next year. Michael McDowell with a team option. Zane Smith, obviously he has a multi-year deal with uh, Front Row Motorsports, and David Gillen, who actually might be in a contract year as well. So I shouldn't say they have three drivers under contract for next year. But having said all of that, they only have two Cup Series cars. Only have two charters. They're not about to run an open car for all 36 uh, races. So they have to decide what they want to do. And ultimately, it kind of comes down to what Eric Almirola decides for his future is what FRM is going to decide for their future as well. They obviously want Michael McDowell and his veteran experience, but at the same time, they know they need to move Zane Smith up because leaving him in the truck series for another year just doesn't do anything for, for anyone. And Zane has already said he doesn't want to get further behind um, in his development, which I completely understand. Stuart Haas Racing would love to get their hands on Zane Smith and build towards the future with him. I don't know if FRM is going to let that go unless Ford steps in. Um, but Ford has proven to not do anything for Stuart Haas Racing in terms of drivers that they could have possibly had, Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch, in recent years. So I don't think that they'll step in. I think there might be some uncertainty around their future with the manufacturer as well. So going forward, I think what we'll see happen is Furniture Row, not Furniture Row, Front Row, my apologies, uh, sticks with Todd Gillen and Zane Smith for next year, going with the young lineup. Uh, because they don't want to lose Zane Smith. Obviously, he is a prized prospect right now and the number one prospect in the Ford pipeline. And they let Michael McDowell go over to Stuart Haas Racing and um, lead them on the veteran side. And if they switch manufacturers, then so be it. So I think that's where we stand with sort of Ford and FRM up to this point. Outside of that, you have Denny Hamlin. Obviously, he's going to re-sign with Joe Gibbs Racing. There's just a lot of moving parts considering he also owns 2311, and they have to extend their contract with Toyota as a manufacturer. They're not going anywhere. Um, Toyota, obviously, is adding on Legacy Motor Club next year because they know strength runs in numbers, and having eight cars on track is better than only having six cars on track. They're not about to just kick two more out the door and go right back down to six when they built up 2311 as much as they have and everything like that. So that deal is just um, waiting to get. Call Racing also has to fill the number 31 car that has been vacated by Justin Haley as he heads off to Rick Ware Racing via Brad Keselowski maybe helping them get him. Either way, that seat is now open and they're looking for a driver with funding. What's a driver? Who's a driver with funding? Austin Hill's a driver with funding. He has multiple Xfinity Series wins. He's about to complete his second full-time Xfinity Series season with Richard Childers Racing. He wants to move up, and according to Jordan Bianchi, he has multiple offers in front of him, not just the Cog offer, which makes me wonder, could the SHR number 10 car be one of those offers that he has in front of him? I'm not 100% sure, um, but it would make sense for SHR because he brings funding, and he's a pretty good talent as well. He also has Xfinity offers on the table too, apparently. He hasn't decided if he's moving up to Cup or staying in Xfinity. And you have to think that JRM uh, might be one of those teams that has an offer out for him. Or even, thinking out loud here, Gibbs could be a place that he could land as well. He obviously has a prior relationship with Toyota when he was with Hattori in the 60, 16 truck, excuse me, in the uh, truck series. So that is always a possibility as well. Outside of that, you have Harrison Burton. He's likely staying at the Wood Brothers for 2024, and you're probably wondering why the hell would they keep somebody as mediocre, as mid, as Mendoza line as Harrison Burton. He's actually below the Mendoza line, if we're being completely honest. And it's because he brings a lot, not a lot of money, but a decent amount of money from Dex Imaging, and they can kind of subsidize the ride with that. So he's not going anywhere. And then everyone's favorite topic at the moment, Shane Van Gisbergen. Where is he headed in 2024? And it sounds like... 
Trackhouse and at least one other team have offered him a ride for 2024. He has not signed anything, at least according to him. He hasn't yet. But Justin Marks did say that if he's coming over to do NASCAR full-time, it only makes sense to do a track house. And I completely agree with that. It just now comes down to the fact that they need a charter because you don't want to run an open car for 36 races. Ask JTG how that panned out for them. They only have one car now. There's different factors there too, but they certainly didn't get the money payout uh, that their chartered car didn't. So SVG is coming and Trackhouse has to find a third charter. I still think that Lidfast number 78 charter makes a ton of sense if they can uh, work out a lease deal with them. We'll see what happens going forward. But Silly Season uh, hasn't wind down yet. I think there's still some, obviously, some parts that need to keep moving and some contracts that need to be signed. But I think the major things hinge on what Martin Drex Jr. and Eric Almirola will do. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and threads at BreakHardBlog.